What is up, y'all? This is Andy Story, your neighborhood art director that designs movie posters for a living. And in today's Poster Grind episode, I'm going to share with you a quick and easy technique to add some depth to your composites while using Photoshop. In the beginning of the tutorial, I'm going to go over the easy steps on how to do this. And then at the end of the tutorial, I'm going to finish out the composite by adding some people, using some filters, a little bit of coloring, and more Photoshop magic. So without further ado, let's dive on in. <laughs> what? All right, first things first, you're going to want to get yourself some awesome photography with some depth in it. Otherwise, this doesn't make any sense. What does make sense is using Envato.com to pick up your stock photography, and that's where I got this awesome New York City photo. Uh, the other awesome thing is that Envato has unlimited downloads on their stock photography. I believe they have monthly subscriptions around a little over 16 bucks a month or a very affordable annual subscription just over 200 bucks and we're talking unlimited downloads of stock photography video stock video sounds fonts photoshop plugins all sorts of cool stuff so go check them out and be sure to use the link below because we get a little something something and that keeps me motivated to make awesome videos for you all i'm going to be making a little bit of a romantic movie poster or composite today the only reason is because i've been working on so many horror movies the past few months i figure i might as well soften it up a little bit now once you get your photography we're gonna have to make sure that it's properly sized up obviously this isn't gonna work so i'm gonna hit command t and that's gonna bring up our transform tool and i'm just going to make sure that i get the proper sizing something like that and then i'm going to hit command t one more time and play around with the perspective i'm just going to add a little bit more of a dramatic edge to it like that and now that i like what i see let me just make sure that it's centered so i'm going to hit command command h bring up my guides i'm just going to push it to the right a little bit more to make sure that little light's centered that's pretty good and i hit command h get rid of the guides and now we're ready to rock with a little bit of blur and some atmosphere so i want to make a copy i'm going to hit command j on this copy i'm going to go up to filter and then i'm going to go to neural filters and then once I'm in Nero filters, I'm gonna go down to depth blur and I'm gonna hit this little button and that's going to bring up this particular panel here. And now you can play with the focal point. Now I'm gonna use the focal point where I plan on having my people. And so that's gonna be less blurry compared to the background and it's gonna use some kind of AI technique to blur it proportionately uh, as if this was a real camera. So I'm gonna hit my focal point. I'm gonna let the AI do its thing. And then I like what I see, it's a little strong, so I'm just gonna reduce the blur strength down to, I don't know, 25, 26. Once you like what you're seeing, hit OK. And that creates the second layer, and that's gonna be our blur layer. I'm gonna turn that on and off, and you can see the difference. Now I'm gonna go back down to that copied layer. We're gonna go back up to filter, neural filter, go back down to depth blur, and then from depth blur, instead of messing around with the focal point, we're just gonna go straight to output depth map only. So click that, and that's gonna make a depth map. Map, And now you're gonna to wanna to make sure the output is set to new layer. That's just gonna basically make a completely new layer, and then hit okay. And on that, doesn't look like much now, but all you gotta do is go up to your blending modes, and we're gonna to go to screen blending mode, and then from here, we can mess around with the opacity because it's a little too strong. And then also, we can use a curves layer. So gonna go to curves, and then once you have your curves layer, you're just gonna hit Option Command G, and that's going to use a clipping mask to, to clip to that bottom layer. And now on the curves, we can go ahead and mess around with the adjustments and drop it because it's a little too strong. Now you can play with the slider, and drop it down and that's gonna put a lot of that atmosphere towards the back of the photograph. So you can see it's very easy to decrease and increase the amount of atmosphere. And then from here, I'm just going to drop down that blur layer and put that underneath the atmosphere layer. And then from here, we can go ahead and make our own group. So I'm gonna make sure all of those are selected hit Command G, and then just gonna name this depth to stay organized. And then once again, you can play with the opacity if both of those layers are a little strong or not. So that's just one way to really dial in your depth. 
So as far as this tutorial is involved, I think we've accomplished using some awesome neural filters to uh, add a more dynamic depth to our composite. And then now, like I'm saying, I'm just gonna freestyle, add our people, and at the end, you can kind of see how I put all the coloring and color grading and everything else together. So sit back, enjoy. Here's a little bit of a speed composite for you to learn from. Okay guys, so this is where we're gonna end up. Uh, I did a little bit of color grading, a little bit of uh, specialty stuff, added some glowies. Basically uh, happy with where it's at. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and I really appreciate y'all watching up until this point. I'll see you on the next one.